there is a system in the brain that has been completely hidden until about 10 years ago. And now it appears that this hidden system could be very important for fibromyalgia and myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, and Gulf illness, and long COVID, and many other neurological conditions. And it's called the glymphatic system. Now, this is something that's present throughout the brain, and it's responsible for flushing waste and toxins out of the brain. And if the system fails, you'll have a buildup of toxins in the brain, which would cause inflammation and neurodegeneration and fatigue and cognitive disorders. Now, the system works similarly to the lymphatic system, which runs throughout the body, and we understand that system pretty well. But the glymphatic system is distinct for the brain. So one of the questions um, is, how did we miss this really important system for hundreds of years? Why is it that we only learned about it about 10 years ago? And there's four main reasons, to my mind at least. Um, the first reason we missed it is that it's very tiny, and so it's hard to see with standard MR images of the brain, at least without using specialized injected contrast agents. Uh, the second, and I think the real reason we didn't catch it before, is it's kind of a pseudo channel. So instead of having its own vessels like blood vessels, it actually operates in the spaces between other cells. And we call these paravascular spaces. And neuroscientists just didn't understand until very recently that the spaces between other things could be functionally important. We could see the spaces and um, these spaces were discovered in the 1800s, but we didn't know anything important was happening there. So the third reason why we didn't realize it was a glymphatic system is because when you dissect a brain, which means you're using a deceased organism, the glymphatic system collapses, physically collapses when the brain dies. And so when you're looking inside the brain tissue, you don't see it. And then the fourth reason uh, a potential reason is because there's some evidence that the system is not engaged unless we're asleep. And we never do imaging in people who are asleep, or almost never. Uh, so for those four reasons, this is a very sneaky system that has evaded detection for a really long time. Now that we see it, we can determine if it's working improperly in some individuals and if a problem with the glymphatic system is the reason why they have their chronic issues. There's been an explosion of research on that now. Um, last year, there were well over 500 scientific studies on it. Ten years ago, there was like five or six. Uh, but there hasn't been much done in fibromyalgia and MECFS and Gulf War illness. I know of one study in fibromyalgia that showed impaired glymphatic system that was in 2023. Uh, I haven't seen one in MECFS, but I did see one in fatigue in depressed individuals earlier this year. So that's kind of related. They also showed um, a dysfunctional glymphatic system. But the one I wanted to talk about is now there's a brand new one in Gulf War illness. And I've worked with several of the authors of this paper, uh, particularly when I was on the West Coast, uh, Dr. Clark and Bailey and Ashford and First. And so I was excited to see this paper pop up last week. I don't think it's open access, at least as far as I could tell. So you might have trouble getting it. But uh, let me give you the quick story anyway. So this was in 203 veterans with chronic multi-symptom illnesses. So, so things like Gulf War illness, they might have MECFS, they may have fibromyalgia. So they're going to have chronic fatigue, pain, and sleep issues. And then 224 aged matched and uh, gender matched or sex matched healthy controls. Now they used a technique called DTI ALPS or diffusion tensor imaging analysis along the perivascular space. Now this images along those glymphatic system tracks, and then it images perpendicular to the tracks at different angles. And by doing that, you can calculate a score that tells you how well the fluid is moving along the glymphatic channels. 
Um, it doesn't require any injected contrast agents. It's just a normal MRI. And they hypothesized that the patients with the chronic symptoms would have a low ALPS score, which indicates lower flow or improper flow throughout the glymphatic system. It's like um, if you have a hose, a water hose, well, when you're holding a water hose, you want the water to flow in the same direction as the hose. That's the way it's supposed to work. If your water is running in different directions from your hose, that means you've got a serious problem with your hose. It means you have holes in it or something and the water's spitting out the side. So that's the same thing with the glymphatic system. So lower scores means uh, worse uh, glymphatic system functioning. So looking at the results, we see that in males, the chronic symptom veterans have significantly lower ALP scores than the healthy controls, just as expected. This suggests there's something wrong with their glymphatic system. And we see the exact same thing in females. And both of these are controlling for age because the system seems to degrade somewhat as we get older. Now, they did a lot of other analyses. I think in, particularly, uh, in particular, I like that they tested this in the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain, and they found the same thing on both sides. So this is a whole brain issue. Uh, and then they looked at the degree of glymphatic impairment with symptom severity, which is always good to do. And they showed that the veterans with the worst sleep and the worst pain and the worst fatigue and the worst overall symptom severity are the ones with the lowest ALPS scores. So the worse their symptoms, the lower their glymphatic functioning scores, exactly as they hypothesized. So really, um, everything fell together just as hypothesized. And you take that together with the quite large sample size that they used. These are convincing findings. Now, I will note, uh, you've heard me say this, probably if you follow my channel, I say this with a lot of things, that when you do patient versus control contrasts, there's oftentimes a lot of overlap between the groups on the test score, meaning that, as you can see here, many patients have scores that are identical to healthy individuals. What that means is that you can't use this test to make a diagnosis of patient versus control. It just doesn't have that sensitivity. Um, but despite that, there's clearly something interesting happening here that should be investigated further. Uh, it's possible that using more specialized techniques could do an even better job at distinguishing the patients from the controls. The scan that was used in this paper, it's not the absolute best available for investigating the glymphatic system. You can get additional information with uh, a higher resolution scanner, like instead of a three Tesla using a seven Tesla, and you can also use contrast agents. Um, as I mentioned before, this is a tough one though, but, but I did mention that it's possible that the pathology is not evident unless the people are sleeping because that's when the system may be most engaged, though it is a nightmare trying to, nightmare, no pun intended, it's a nightmare trying to run a sleeping neuroimaging study. It is so difficult to do. Sedation is probably not going to work. Um, I think they're going to need to, the patients would need to actually fall asleep naturally in a horrendously loud MRI scanner and comfortably go to sleep in that bore. And uh, I don't really see that happening. Uh, anyway, that's the main thing that I wanted to share. I, I'm really glad to see a paper like this one. I hope we see more like this in MECFS and the other conditions that I talk about frequently. I've not run this scan on my participants, but I may add it to my tests going forward. And also, I want to make it really clear, this is pretty cutting-edge research. There's still quite a bit that we need to learn about how important this system is to chronic pain and fatigue and cognitive issues. So I think it's premature to talk about interventions. I wish we could, but I just think it's too early to suggest interventions. There's really no scientific evidence supporting anything that could change the glymphatic system in these patient populations I study. There are groups that are investigating possible ways to assist glymphatic systems and to increase the 
cerebral spinal fluid that's flowing through the paravascular spaces. Uh, improved sleep is an obvious one groups are going to look at. The team that wrote this paper reported that 96% of their patient group have insomnia. So I think that's going to be a large part of you know, the bigger overall story. Proper hydration is probably going to be investigated. And there are groups that are testing things like uh, photobiomodulation, so like light therapy, intracranial light therapy, and other techniques. And hopefully they can kind of change the functioning of the lymphatic system and improve it, especially when people are asleep. So as soon as something interesting comes up in terms of therapy, and it comes up in the scientific literature, I will be sure to discuss it here. So if you want to follow this story and if you want to follow the other ones I talk about, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I put out a video um, every week. I try to put one out every week on Mondays unless I'm just completely bogged down with a grant or another major product project. So I hope you can come back and I will be back here soon. Bye.